Let's install Kali Linux on your Windows 11 machine using VirtualBox. First, let's search for VirtualBox. Let's click on Downloads and select Windows Hosts. This will start the download process. It takes a few minutes to download the installation file, so I'll speed up the video. Once it's done, let's click on the folder icon to go into the Downloads folder. And in the Downloads folder, let's right-click and bring up a terminal window. The default terminal window for Windows 11 is PowerShell, unless you've changed it. If we run DIR, we can see our VirtualBox installation file. Before we install it, we should verify the checksum of the file we downloaded matches the value on the site. This is a way to verify the integrity of the file we downloaded. It's calculated based on the contents of the file. If the contents have been modified, the checksum will be different. We'll enter a PowerShell command to compute the checksum locally and compare it to the value posted on the VirtualBox site. Here we'll type in two open parentheses, then the git filehash commandlet to compute the hash locally. We'll specify the name of the file we downloaded, dash a, and specify the algorithm we want to use to compute the checksum. We'll enter SHA-256. Then we'll enter dot hash to compute the hashed value, another parentheses to close out the statement. This statement will return the hashed value so now we need to compare it to something. We'll enter dash eq to compare it to the value from the site. For now, let's enter an empty string. We'll go back to the VirtualBox site and click on SHA-256 checksums. This is a list of the checksums that were computed for all the possible downloads. We want the 7014win.exe file. All right, there it is. Let's copy that hash value and go back to the command prompt and replace the empty string with the SHA value and press return. We get back the result of true. This means the locally computed value equals the value we copied from the site, so our file can be trusted. Now let's run the exe file. We get an installation wizard to walk through. Let's click next. We'll take the defaults here, so let's click next again and click yes. And click yes to add the Python core dependencies. And finally, click install. The installation's pretty quick. When it's done, let's click finish. VirtualBox came up on my other monitor, so let's drag it over here to where we are. All right, VirtualBox is installed. Now that we have VirtualBox, let's download and install Kali Linux. Let's search for Kali Linux, and let's click the download slash get Kali Linux link. Kali is supported in many different formats. If we scroll down, we can see there are images, pre-built virtual machines, Android packages, cloud and containerized versions, and so on. We'll choose the installer images, and within this, there are a few forms. AMD 64 and 32-bit, Apple Silicon. There are also different versions of the standard Kali, Kali Purple. We'll take the recommended 64-bit version. Notice when I click on the download initially, I get this suspicious site pop-up. It's saying one of the mirrors might be compromised. This might be a false alarm, or it could be accurate. Either way, I'm not proceeding. Let's go back. And I'll click on the download arrow instead. Notice this is a subdomain under Kali.org. No warning, and the download starts up just fine. Okay, the internet was having a bad day when I downloaded this file, so it took a really long time. I'll speed up the video to get to the installation. All right, we're back. It's done. Let's click on the download link and go into the downloads folder by clicking the icon. And just like with VirtualBox, we'll want to compute the checksum. So let's right click and open a terminal. There's our ISO file for Kali. Let's go back to the Kali site, and where it says sum, let's click on that link. The SHA-256 algorithm was used. Let's copy the checksum value and go back to the terminal window. And enter the same get file hash commandlet once again. Specify the name of the Kali ISO file. Add dash A and specify SHA-256 is to be used. Close the paren. Add dot hash and close the other print again. Add dash eq and in quotes, paste in the SHA-256 value we got from the Kali site. This takes a minute because the ISO file is so large. Eventually it comes back as true, meaning the checksums matched. Great, time to install Kali. Let's open VirtualBox and click the new icon. Let's give our virtual machine a name. This will be the name of the subdirectory on our Windows box where the files will be stored. I'll call it Kali Box. For ISO image, I'll select Other and go to the Downloads folder and select the ISO that we just downloaded. VirtualBox is calling this an Ubuntu 64-bit version of Linux. 
That's fine. Kali and Ubuntu are both Debian versions. We'll accept that and click Next. Let's bump the base memory to 4096, but do whatever makes sense on your machine. And I'll add two CPUs instead of just one. Let's click Next. We want to create a new virtual hard disk for the operating system. Let's bump the size to whatever makes sense for you. I'll select 40 gig and click Next. This all looks good, so I'll click Finish. Before we start, I want to make a few tweaks. Let's click on Settings. In the General page, I'll select the Advanced tab. I'll change the Share Clipboard and the drag and drop to bidirectional. This is a small security risk, but it adds a ton of convenience for your day-to-day -day life, so do what you think is best here. Under System, I'll uncheck Floppy. I haven't seen one of those in many years. Under Processor, I'll enable the PAE NX. I really don't need this unless I'm installing a 32-bit version of Linux and accessing more than 4 gig of memory, but there's no harm enabling it. And under Display, let's boost the memory. We'll push it to 128 meg. Proper video display on VirtualBox is often challenging, so I'll give it as much memory as it can, so hopefully we'll get a nice output. Under Storage, the ISO is selected, so we're good there. All right, let's click OK, and now let's click Start. It takes a minute for the ISO to spin up. And of course, VirtualBox wants to install Kali on a thumbnail-sized image. This is partially because I have a 4K screen. This image might look better on a lower resolution screen. That said, I'll zoom in so we can see it better. Let's select the graphical install. These next few pages will depend on where you are in the world and the language you speak. I'll select English as my language. I'm in the US. And I'll add the American English keyboard. I'll speed things up here and keep it moving. It prompts me for host name. I'll enter the name of the machine. I'm not too creative today, so I'll just call it Cali. I'll skip the network name. Next, it prompts me for a username. I'll make it my first name, Brian. And I'll assign a password to my user. And of course, make sure they match. Next, I'll select Eastern Time in the US. Now it wants to set up the disk. Some of these questions are scary when it talks about partitioning the disk. Remember, it's talking about the guest operating system, Linux, not the host, in my case, Windows 11. Let's select Guided, Use Entire Disk. Let's select the disk. I'll take the default here, All Files in one partition. Then select Finish Partitioning. Next, it asks if we want to write the changes to disk. We do, so let's select Yes and click Continue. Otherwise, our install won't proceed. It installs some base software. We'll skip ahead a bit. Next, it asks about some software choices, especially about the user interface. I'll take the defaults and click Continue. More installation, so let's skip ahead. Next, it says it's going to install the Grub bootloader. Again, this is on the guest operating system, Kali. So let's select Yes and click Continue. And on the next screen, select the device and click Continue. And it finishes the installation. And does a reboot. Then it restarts and prompts us for our user ID and password. I'm going to change the screen resolution to make this bigger. Under Virtual, I'll resize it to 250%. That looks better. My user ID is Brian, and there's my password. And the screen resolution's messed up again. I'll click View. Let's make it 350%. Okay, not too bad. Let's open a terminal window and type in uname-a to see the version of Kali we have installed. All right, so we're done with the installation, but we should update the operating system before we really start using it. So I'll quickly go through that. This process took about an hour when I did it. Again, bad day for the internet, but I'll fast forward through the boring parts. First, we want to run cat etc apt sources.list. This is to verify we're pointing to the official and correct Kali repos. We are, so let's continue. Next, let's run sudo apt update. This will refresh the local package index. I'm prompted for my password. And finally, we'll run sudo apt full dash upgrade dash y. And here you go. This will take a long time to complete and download all of the new packages. Your machine may auto lock during the process, so you'll need to enter your password once again. When it finishes the downloads, it will commence with the installation. It asks me for the character set I want to use, which is strange. Scrolling to the bottom, I'll select guess the optimal character set and then select OK. Then the installation really gets going. I'll fast forward once again, and finally it's done. No reboot, we're just back to the command prompt. 
Okay, that's it. You've got a fully patched and updated version of Kali Linux ready to go. Let me know in the comments what Kali tools you'd like to see videos about. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.